Hi, my name is Liam and I'm a Geoschem support team member at Washington University in St. Louis. Today I'm going to show you how to create a GCHP run directory, how to configure the simulation, and kind of the basics of running GCHP. This tutorial is going to build off the tutorial that I made yesterday on building GCHP, so if you haven't seen that one, you should go back and watch it before continuing with this. So the first thing you're going to want to do is log into your cluster and get an interactive job. I'm going to be setting up a C24 full chemistry simulation, and so 6 cores and 32 gigs of memory is good enough for what we're going to need here. Okay, so now I have an interactive job, and I'm just going to navigate to the directory that we were working with yesterday. Now you're going to want to make sure that you've loaded the same environment that you compiled GCHP in yesterday. So for example, you're going to want to make sure you can run commands like CMake and MPI run, and libraries like NetCDF, HDF5, and ESMF are loaded and ready to go. So just as an example, I'm going to check that I can run CMake uh, and MPI run. Okay, so now we're actually going to create a run directory. So you can see I'm in this tutorial directory and my GCHP source code is right there. And so I'm going to put a run directory right beside this. So the way you create a run directory is you go into the source code um, and there's this run subdirectory. And so you're going to go into this directory um, and there's a script called create render.sh. And so you're just going to run this. The first time you run this script, it's going to ask you where your ext data folder is. And so this is all the gschem input data. So mine is slash ext data. I'm going to select full chemistry. I'm going to select uh, standard simulation. I'm going to use Mira2 uh, met fields. Um, and then I want to put the run directory under my project's GCST tutorial. Uh, and then it asks you to give it a name, so I'm going to do test render. Lastly, um, it asks if you want to track the changes with git. I'm going to choose no. There we go, and our run directory is created. So now I'm just going to uh, cd to that directory. And so this is what a run directory looks like. Let me just move this to the top of the screen so you can see it. So there are a bunch of files in the run directory. Uh, some of these are configuration files. For example, uh, runconfig.sh is a configuration file that you'll uh, use a lot. Um, a bunch of the other configuration files end in .rc. Uh, some important ones are extdata.rc, which controls all of the uh, data that goes into GCHP. There's also history.rc, which controls all of the output from GCHP. In the run directory, there are also a bunch of sample restart files. So for example, initial GS chem uh, restart C24 full chem. And this is actually a link to the GS chem restarts in ext data. So you can see the full path there linking to um, GS chem restarts. There's also this chemdir which links to the chemistry inputs in your ext data. There's also hcodir, which links to your um, hemco data. And there's also uh, metdir, which links to your meteorological fields. There are also some example uh, run scripts to help get you started in this run script samples. And then the other um, directory that's kind of worth uh, noticing is the output dir, which is where GCHP is going to put all of its output. Okay, so one thing we don't have in our run directory yet is the GCHP executable that we compiled yesterday. So what we're gonna do now is go back to our build directory from yesterday and configure it so that we install that GCHP executable in our run directory. So now go back to that build directory that we were working with yesterday. Okay, and so once we're here, um, the option that we're looking for the, the build option that we're looking for is the render variable. So as we mentioned yesterday, from now on, you're going to be running CMake dot, and that dot is telling CMake that 
your current directory is your build directory. And we're going to set the render variable and we're going to set it to the uh, path to our uh, new run directory. And so now we're just going to run make install to actually install that executable um, in our run directory. So now if you navigate back to the run directory, uh, you can see that the GCHP executable is there now. Okay, so now we're actually going to configure a simulation. So um, as I mentioned earlier, the main configuration file that you're going to be working with is runconfig.sh. And so I'm just going to open that and I'm going to set up my simulation so it uses six cores. And I also want to confirm that it's C24 resolution and that it's only an hour long. So I'm just going to go down to compute resources and change the total number of cores to six and the number of nodes, uh, cores per node to six. I'm just going to go down um, and double check that the cube sphere resolution is 24. Um, and then if I go a little bit uh, further down, uh, I'm just going to confirm that the start date is July 1st, um, 2019, and the end date is an hour later. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and save and close that file. And so something you should know is runconfig.sh is a helper script that modifies other configuration files. So you have to make sure to run it whenever you modify it. So now our simulation is configured and we're ready to run GCHP. The specific command that you use to launch GCHP depends on your MPI library um, and your system's scheduler. So you'll have to refer to either your system's documentation uh, or talk to your system administrator for kind of the full details on running MPI jobs. But a number of MPI um, libraries support the MPI run program, uh, which has the uh, dash NP argument, which lets you specify the number of processes that you want to launch. So in my case, it's six. Uh, and then you pass it the path to the MPI executable that you want to launch. So I'm just going to go ahead um, and uh, run that right now. While this is running, I thought I'd maybe just mention a couple things you should watch out for. The first is missing input data. If your EXT data is missing um, any files that the simulation needs, uh, the simulation is going to crash and it should tell you which file is missing. The other thing you should watch out for are default resource limits. Um, because sometimes these are too low uh, and it'll cause the system to kill your GCHP simulation. Okay, so the simulation has finished running um, and this is what it should look like if it ran successfully. If it didn't run successfully, there will be a bunch of error messages um, and hopefully those will describe what, what the problem was. Something um, I want to mention is if you have to restart your simulation, you have to delete two files. You have to delete cap restart as well as GC chem internal checkpoint, which both have to do with um, starting and, and restarting the simulation. In your case, you're just going to want to delete those. Um, and you can read the GCHP user docs for kind of the full explanation of what these files are. Yeah, so that's how you run GCHP. A good next step would be taking a look in this run script samples uh, directory because it has a number of batch jobs that are uh, kind of good templates to, to start working with. Yeah, so that's how you run GCHP. Um, I'd just like to remind you that if you run into any problems, um, just feel free to open an issue on our uh, GitHub repo. Thanks.